My last storyline to get to is the New York Mets. And I've talked a lot about the New York Mets this year, specifically at the beginning of the year. I went on record saying, look, this Mets team is good. This Mets team is different. And this Mets team is not going to Met. The, the, saying, the saying that has become ingrained in my brain over the last few years because people like to overuse sayings. Oh, the Mets are metting. Well, it wasn't going to happen this year. It's clearly still not happening, and I don't believe it will happen at any point. I believe in this Mets team, and I want to explain to you right now why the Mets are a World Series team. So as we, as we speak right now, they have over a five-game lead in the NL East after the Braves narrowed it down over the Braves. The Braves are also one of the better teams in the league, but that's just a credit to how good the Mets have been. So my three reasons why the Mets are a World Series team. First and foremost, Jacob deGrom and Max Scherzer. And I feel like that's that's one of the biggest reasons of all. If you can ever start off something with that, you, you know you have a pretty good team. But since deGrom has joined this rotation, it's just gone to a new level. DeGrom and Scherzer have been unbelievable. Since deGrom came back for the first start on August 2nd, The Mets have three starters inside the top 20 in all of Major League Baseball in ERA. No other team has that many guys in the top three. Chris Bassett hasn't given up a single earned run since DeGrom returned. Max Scherzer, a 0.64 ERA. Jacob DeGrom, a 1.62 ERA. And you may think, okay, but you're just pointing back to when DeGrom joined the rotation. Like you're you're kind of cherry-picking numbers there. That's not exactly true. You can see how big of a difference Jacob DeGrom makes for this team, for this rotation, for everybody around him. He's literally lifting up everybody around him. This tweet, I don't know which one is which, but Jacob DeGrom and Max Scherzer are the John Lennon and Paul McCartney of contemporary pitchers. That's how good they've been. They also lead all Major League starting staffs in that period with strikeouts, with 82. So this is, again, since DeGrom joined, they had 82 strikeouts. It's by far the most. The White Sox have 71, and that is the second most. I mean, these two, Jacob DeGrom and Max Scherzer, imagine facing these guys to start a playoff series. Imagine facing the Mets in a five-game playoff series, much less a seven-game where you're probably going to have to face them twice. Now, DeGrom's iffy there because I don't know if Jacob DeGrom is going to be going on short rest much in the playoffs, which tends to be something important that is done. Is Okay, pitchers aren't going on their usual five rests. They're going on four, Some in some instances, three, if your backs are really against the wall. I don't think there's a world in which we're going to be seeing that from Jacob DeGrom, but who knows. But since DeGrom has been back, listen to him and Scherzer. This is the catalyst of the rotation. Jacob DeGrom, and Max Scherzer. They're 3-0. In 30.2 innings pitched, they've allowed four runs, 45 strikeouts in those 30.2 innings, and just one walk, a 1.17 ERA, and a whip of 0.65. Opponents are slashing just 174 and a 428 OPS. That is unbelievable. So DeGrom and Scherzer, my first point here of why this team is a World Series caliber team. Next up, offensive depth. This is a big one for this team. Offensive depth. In years past, it was Pete Alonso. Pete Alonso had to drive in all the runs. He was going to supply all the power for the team. And if it didn't happen, they just weren't going to be very good. And they had the ability to just get shut out multiple nights in a row. And then they'd just drop and drop and drop in the standings. Last year, it was about Pete Alonso and Francisco Lindor. They added a piece. Lindor, as we know, had a really bad year, and the team wasn't very good at the, you know, they fell off a cliff at the end of the year. This year, they addressed that, and it's no longer just the two of them. It is no longer just Pete and and Francisco Lindor. They've added Starley Marte, who is having an all-star year. He was an all-star. In my opinion, he is the MVP of this offense. That's how good he's been. Jeff McNeil has been healthy, thankfully, and really good offensively. Eduardo Escobar, who hasn't been great, but has come up in big moments for them, which is kind of my whole point here. They have so many guys with the ability on any given night 
to step up and to score enough runs to help out that rotation. They no longer need to put up eight runs a night. Sometimes it's going to be about scoring three. And in the other night, when DeGrom was on the mound, all it took was one. Pete Alonso drove in a run. And that's all they needed. That's what's different about this Mets team. They have the pitching. We know that. But offensively, they have enough guys that are capable of winning a game for your team, which is different than years past. So Jacob DeGrom, Max Scherzer, and the depth of the offense are my first two points. My third and final, my closer, if you will, is Edwin Diaz. Edwin Diaz is my third reason why this Mets team is a World Series team. Edwin Diaz has been the best closer in the game of baseball. He's on pace to break the single-season K per nine record, which he's currently sitting at a 17.9. The record all-time is Aroldis Chapman, who did it in 2014 when he was with the Cincinnati Reds. He's at 17.7. That's the current record. Edwin Diaz is at 17.9. Now, K per nine can sound, you know, like if you're not in the weeds with baseball, you might not quite understand what that means. This is saying over the course of nine innings, if Edwin Diaz were to pitch in a nine-inning game, he would be striking out pretty much 18 batters per game. 18 of the 27 outs would be via the strikeout. So right now, if the season ended, he'd break that all-time record. He has 27 saves, the third most in baseball, and 30 opportunities, which is the third most. He's one of only two pitchers in the majors with 30-plus save opportunities and a save percentage of 90% or higher. He's also the only reliever in the top 25 of save opportunities to have surrendered less than 10 runs this season. The next closest is Emmanuel Classe, who is at 10 on the dot. Edwin Diaz is the definition of of dominant. And when you look at winning in the playoffs, that's what this is about right now. For for the majority of these teams that I've talked about today, Astros, um, Yankees, Mets, even the even the Padres to some degree. It's now about winning when you get to the playoffs. And how do you win in the playoffs? Well, pitching is a massive part of it. Having the rotation, which they do, DeGrom, Scherzer, Bassett, and getting it to a ninth-inning guy in Edwin Diaz is just something you don't want to face. This team, the New York Mets, have every bit of the makings of a World Series team, and it's because of the way they are designed. It's because they are built to win in the playoffs. Of course, they're winning right now. I believe they will win the NL East, but this team is built to win in October, and you can't say that about every team out there. They match up well against every single team they could possibly face. And a big reason of that is the pitching. When it comes to October baseball, the game changes a little bit. It becomes about pitching. Good pitching can shut down a good offense. We see that all the time in the playoffs. Good pitching shuts down good offenses. The Mets, they have better pitching than anyone. Nobody wants to run into DeGrom and Scherzer. And that is the reason why I say... This New York Mets team is a World Series caliber team. Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3 0, or just talking ball, join us. Call us at 213 537 9339 with your questions. We have a weekly guest and we have a lot of fun, so hit that subscribe button.